Well, everybody, we just recorded for 30 minutes, and uh, you wouldn't know that, because for you, you've just started this podcast. And here is our intro. Hope you enjoy it. When you hear these words, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Dolls, sailors, Florida, and lolling tongues. If you thought, oh my god! There's a new Navy-themed line of brat dolls called the Freedom Seaman. That would be fantastic. But sadly, no. Today, we're going to uh, take it down a notch and talk about a creepy-ass doll called Robert. This is the story of Robert the doll, the doll named Robert. And we must fund the uh, seaman line of dolls you just created <laughs> the freedom seaman freedom seaman <laughs> i'm john and i'm cat and this is castagast depending to when you're (laughs) depending on when you're listening to this this is our first recording after the holidays so we hope you had a a merry christmas and a happy new year after the holidays yeah Mm -hmm. it was also after uh last year's thanksgiving and (laughs) last year's halloween or all hallows eve for all you pagans and uh easter Easter after in the civic holiday if you're a Canadian and we have uh we have a bit of a different story we're telling today yeah yeah this uh story with a happy ending good morals oh well you'll have to wait and see fairy tale we're not here to talk about you uh, okay <laughs> all right tell, tell me this tell me the goddamn story all right well I think the one thing that you and I love more than our each other and our pets Uh, Would be horror movies, wouldn't you say? Sorry, I wasn't listening. The one thing we love more than our pets is horror movies. I kind of like Skyrim a little bit more than horror movies, but horror movies are pretty high up there. You know what's interesting to me? Is why do they call them horror movies? Why not terror movies? We consider ourselves quite knowledgeable in the horror movie genre. Would you agree? Mm, As I drink my Irish coffee. And that's like... And it's like beyond, uh, you know, the A-list films. We know a lot of B and C and D-list yeah. films. In fact, I think Joe Bob Briggs is the number one spot on both of our hall passes. I love him more than Mother Teresa. Yes, I, I agree. <laughs> He's awesome. And Darcy's probably my number two on the hall pass ever since seeing her in the in the Gator Bait cosplay. <laughs> yeah, jeez. I wonder how much tape they had to use to keep the, they, <laughs> that shirt on her tits. They, yeah, they ran out the town supply on tape mm. that day, I think. Yeah. So, it's a good thing that I put stocks into tit tape. Yes, right yeah. Right before the... the uh, it went through the roof. The production yeah. of that episode. <laughs> I'm a millionaire now. Yeah. So having said all this, okay. I thought it would be uh, fun to cover a different kind of story today. Uh, both of us being a fan of the paranormal, I thought we'd cover the nightmare fuel of Robert the Doll. Okay. Robert the Doll. Mm-hmm. Bobby the Barbie. <laughs> Yes. So this is a true story. If you can't see her, it's because you're listening <laughs> and uh, she's doing like air quotes. <laughs> if you're a skeptic, this might not be your thing, but it's a true story about a haunted doll. I read sparked the inspiration for the Child's Play uh, film, but they're completely different stories and it's a completely different looking type of doll so i don't know if that's necessarily true or not or if someone okay. just said that child's play yeah i never thought there would actually be like a real life inspiration for that thing i well i'll let you know where i think it might have came from but okay 
So Robert the doll stands at three feet tall and six pounds. So he's a little bit bigger than Danny DeVito. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a big doll. And uh, Rhea Perlman. Rhea Perlman is pretty big. She is. Like she's like what, four foot and a half? Maybe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Robert, he's made of cloth that is stuffed with wood wool known as ex- Excelsior. Wood wool. Yeah. He's dressed in a sailor's costume and cuddles an equally terrifying stuffed dog with his tongue lolling out of his mouth. Lolling? Lolling. You know, like the tongue out the side of the... Did you just make up a fucking verb? (laughs) No, it's everywhere. The tongue is hanging out of its mouth. You do know that uh, you have an English degree, right? Lolling. So you should know very well that lolling... Let me spell that. Let's see that. Where is it? Hold on. Right, Right click on this. You guys. Look up synonyms. Lolling. No lollygagging. Lolling. So this is what the tongue is doing of this dog. It's sitting, lying, or standing in a lazy, relaxed way. Mm -hmm. So I would say it's lying in a relaxed way. The second example says, stick out one's tongue so that it hangs loosely out of the mouth. (laughs) I love that. Hang loosely and droop. (laughs) So you could, I could say that some of my exes had lolling boobs. <laughs> oh my god, you are <laughs> awful. So Robert's face is now completely worn and covered in wear and tear. The Steiff manufacturer, it's a Ger- the German company who... It's always a German company. I know. <laughs> Make haunted shit. So the German company who created Robert says they believe that he was created as a dis- just for display. To display jes- jester or clown dolls. So as if he couldn't be scary enough with his worn face, he once looked like a clown or a jester. Are you afraid of clowns? Yes. You know it's just makeup. You know, when I was a child, we I went to a birthday party and we were given cotton candy, like the bagged cotton candy and the cotton candy had on the bag a picture of a clown. Mm-hmm. I ended up getting very ill that night. It was probably food poisoning or something. But I had like fever dreams of the clown poisoning the cotton candy. And that's what made us all sick, even though I was the only one sick. But in my dream, we were all sick. So I have like this fear of, of clowns and that clown image from my dream in particular. Well, that's a hell of a story. <laughs> so they, yes, they believe that he was a display for clown or jester dolls. So he has a nubby nose and beady black eyes that stare into your soul. (laughs) Nubby nose. (laughs) At 117 years old, Robert now lives in a display case at the Fort East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida. But how and when did Robert end up there? Let me tell you. How does anyone end up in Florida? Because they are probably lived in a, they're probably living right now in a lockdown state yeah. with no fucking job. Mm-hmm. And they would like a taste of freedom again. So in the early 1900s, a young child named Eugene Robert Otto, who goes by Gene. Oh God, another triple name. He goes by Gene. Of course, anyone named Eugene would go by Gene. <laughs> Was given, it's not like they would go by you. And he doesn't go by the three names. I'm just giving you his full name. What's your name? You. Anyways, he goes by Jean. In the early 1900s, a young child named Eugene Robert Otto, who goes by Jean, was given the doll. There are conflicting stories as to who gave him the doll. Some sources said Jean received it as a birthday present from his grandfather. Another said he was given it from a servant that worked for his parents and that the servant gave it to him as an act of revenge. The claim states that the Ottos mistreated her so badly that she cursed the doll with voodoo. And then gifted it to Jean. And that's where I think the relation for child's play. If that's true or not, that's where I think it stemmed from. Because in the first child's play, Chucky is taken over by a a criminal spirit. And it was all due to voodoo. Oh, it was voodoo. Yeah, it was voodoo. So I think that that's... But having said all that, um, it, it seems fairly clear that the grandfather was likely the one to gift him. The doll. So Jean became attached to Robert almost immediately. It was Jean who named Robert Robert and gave him the sailor suit and Robert's plush dog, Leo. Leo's kind of a like a lion name, not a dog name. <laughs> 
He brought it everywhere with him, and he began speaking to Robert in the first person. And he asked his parents and those around him to address Robert as Robert, and he would even give Robert a seat at the dinner table and bring cutlery up to Robert's mouth with food on it, mimicking feeding him. Oh, God. And he would have It's his... like that fucking... What is that doll brand right now? And it has, oh, they have videos of it. Yeah. Oh, that only insane people fucking I do. showed you that YouTube. Yeah, yeah Baby Alive. Yeah your, your, yeah, your goddamn nieces want that shit. I know. Baby Alive. So he, <laughs> Brain dead. Yeah. So he would even ask his mom to make up plates for Robert and to feed Robert herself. So Jean just adored Robert. And even though he was just a doll, or was he? Yes, he was a doll. <laughs> Strange and unusual things started to happen. One night, Jean woke up to find Robert sitting at the bottom of his bed, staring at him. Moments later, Jean's mother was woken up by Jean's screams. She ran to his room but couldn't get the door open. She could hear furniture being tossed and overturned about in the room, all through Jean's screams for help. She was finally able to get through the locked door and stepped into a frightening scene. The room was in absolute shambles. Jean was curled up in the fetal position, absolutely terrified, and Robert was sitting perfectly at the foot of Jean's bed. All Jean could say was, Robert did it. But this wouldn't cause a rift in Jean and Robert's friendship. Jean's parents... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get high up aroused you know, with my just, friends every so often. Yes. Toss their fucking furniture around and sit at the edge of their bed. Mm-hmm. Jean's parents had reportedly said that they would hear Jean talking to Robert, and a deeper, unfamiliar voice would be the one replying back. They questioned Robert about Hello, this. Hello, <laughs> They were adamant that this voice could not have come out of Gene. There were also reports that Robert had been heard giggling and running up and down the stairs. And people who would be walking by Gene's Key West home have said that they have spotted Robert looking through the window. Oh, my God. Gene's parents would often wake to more screams from Gene, more furniture tossed about, and his toys mutilated. Gene would always reply... Robert did it. Was this a case of a haunted doll? Or was Gene a mischievous kid who would blame his antics on his cloth friend? I wonder. Yes. So Gene eventually moved out to attend the University of Virginia to study architecture. How old was he at this time? He seven. He moved out to attend university, you <laughs> schmuck. <laughs> this is like this this is like Toy Story 2 now, mm-hmm. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, he's moved away. Mm-hmm. Now, how Robert has to figure out life without Gene. Yeah. Him and Buzz Lightyear are going <laughs> to escape out a fucking window with the help of Ham. All right, thank you for that. <laughs> so, yeah, so he moved uh, to the University of Virginia to study architecture. However, Gene always had a love for painting, so he left the University of Virginia after two years and went to the Academy of Fine Arts located in Chicago. He remained there for three years. After the Academy and working in a New York art studio for two and a half years, Jean moved to Paris and settled in quite well. Paris, Ontario? No, Paris, France. (laughs) And he was actually establishing his name uh, in studios in Paris. It was there that he met Annette Parker, who would eventually become his wife. Mm. She was originally from New England, but was in Paris studying music. Jean and Annette married in Paris on May 3rd, 1930. They moved back to New York in the mid-30s, but they were sadly hit badly by the Depression. Oh, like everyone else. Yeah. Annette performing some shows at Rockefeller's Rainbow Room, and Jean started working as a furniture salesman. In the mid-40s, Jean's mother had passed away, so Annette and Jean packed up and headed back to Key West to move into his child home. With Robert being in the attic, it didn't take long for Gene to rekindle his friendship with him. So he's now a grown man. Yeah, that's the best time to play with dolls. Yes. Annette was not a fan of Robert. She found him absolutely creepy. She was a bit jealous. She wanted him kept in the attic. So Gene compromised, and he made Robert his very own special room in the attic. Oh, my God. He fully furnished this room with child furniture and filled it with toys for Robert. This is the same room in the attic that Gene also made his painting studio, so he would paint alongside his favorite pal. When Gene would mistreat Annette, 
or say something hurtful to her, he would always say that Robert did it or made him do it. Well, that's concerning. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly, Jean became ill with Parkinson's disease and passed away in 1974. A Sun Centennial article reported that Jean spent most of his time in the attic talking to Robert before his death. Annette sold the house and moved to Massachusetts. Ma- Massachusetts? Massachusetts. Ma- Massachusetts. <laughs> moved to Massachusetts. There you go. You said it for me. The new owner, here's another one, another tongue twister. The new owner was Myrtle Reuter. <laughs> Myrtle Reuter. <laughs> she was actually uh, the caretaker for Jean before he passed. Myrtle absolutely believed Robert was haunted and corroborated all of Jean's stories. She claims she would find Robert in different spots than where she left him. Her visitors hated Robert and would claim that he would appear and disappear. There are even reports from Myrtle and her visitors that Robert could change his expressions. And especially if he ever heard them talking negatively about Jean. After 20 years of being a companion to Robert and his antics, Myrtle donated Robert in 1994 to the Key West Fort East Martello Museum, which is where he resides today. Robert lives in a glass display box within the museum. And staff have claimed that though they have not seen with their own eyes Robert move, they have found him in different positions within his case. They have heard unexplained footsteps around the museum at night, demonic giggling, and have also said that Robert changes his expressions from, quote, neutral to nasty in the blink of an eye, end quote. Jeez, it's like, it's like you playing board games with me. Mm. Just like your expression changing from neutral to nasty pretty quickly. Yeah, you and do what's that. The, and what's the difference between a giggle and a demonic giggle? Is it mm. like, <laughs> <laughs> like there you go you just answered your own uh, question i just i don't think that's demonic <laughs> maybe sly what about the exorcist where she's like cackling you know when she's she, possessed that's she, pretty demonic she's having a good guffaw <laughs> so museum visitors are given advice on how to approach robert the best way according to hauntedrooms.co.uk they are asked to speak to him in a polite way ask him permission for a photo And to treat him with respect. (laughs) If I was given that instruction, I it would deter me from wanting to go to this case. And what um, what pronouns does Robert prefer? If I'm going to be speaking to him in a polite way. So inside Robert's case are letters written to him asking for forgiveness. Many have written in claiming that they have experienced bad luck since visiting Robert and mistreating him. These letters have stated that shortly after visiting Robert, they've experienced everything from accidents, relationships ending, to death and disease. There's over a thousand letters inside his case. Wouldn't it be interesting if someone just pissed off Robert and then COVID happened? Oh my God, could you imagine? Someone fucking send a I'm sorry letter to Robert, please. Yeah, we should try. We should do that because we can write Robert. So that is the story in a nutshell of Robert the Doll. I personally do not believe he's haunted, but I could be wrong. But I also think maybe Jean was a little bit mischievous and blamed everything on the doll. Maybe the doll did take on some sort of negative energy from being blamed for everything. Maybe when Jean passed away, some sort of attachment remained in the doll and... There's some sort of spiritual haunting there, maybe, but what do you think? I think anything that's filled with, what is it, bark wool? (laughs) Wood Wood wool. wool has to be haunted. So you yourself can write to Robert the Doll, and you can do so by visiting robertthedoll.org, and you can get his full address and email address there. His email is robert at robertthedoll.org. And you can even purchase from the gift shop your very own Robert the Doll miniature that, that so comes complete stupid. with with Leo and his tongue lolling out the side. So some fun facts, I thought, for this story was uh, 
Jean's Key West home is the most photographed Key West home other than Hemingway's. And I believe I have a photo of it. <laughs> it's, it's the second location on the tour. It's a really cute purple, purple home. And I, I'm sure I have a picture of it. It instantly looked familiar to me when, when I was researching this story. And then us being horror fanatics, there is a film franchise on Robert the Doll. And it's not the child's play. It's called Robert the Doll. The first was called Robert and was released in 2015. And since then, four sequels have followed. The Curse of Robert the Doll, The Toy Maker, The Revenge of Robert the Doll, and Robert Reborn. <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, and Don't Look Up, <laughs> a film with Leonardo DiCaprio about climate crisis. It's got, uh, so this film franchise, it has a 3.1 out of 10 rating on IMDb and a 15% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. There's no critic score. So. No critic wanted to touch it. No. Because but they, think, don't wanna, they don't want to piss off Robert. I think it's a film franchise we should try and watch how oh, horrible it is. If, that would be interesting, though. It'd be interesting if uh, Joe Bob ever covers it. I had no idea that there was a film. Yeah, I doubt uh, I doubt he will. I can't see Is them that playing bad? that at well, I can't see them playing that at a drive in. It is Joe Bob's last drive in. <laughs> oh, the only place shit at drive ins, that's the point. No, no, no. No, no, no. You're, you're gonna get a lot of hate mail for that one. Especially from Joe Bob fans. How dare you say that they only play shit at drive ins? Okay, they they play like B movies at drive ins. I right? saw the descent at the drive in. That's kind, your, of, that's your, kind of like A minus. Guys, at best. write into Casagas at gmail.com <laughs> and let John have it with the stupid statements he's making today. <laughs> the last movie I saw at the drive in was the, uh, what is it called? The, the Indispensables? No, it was the one with the Stallone. With Stallone. The Expendables? The Expendables. <laughs> and I thought, my goodness, what a lovely B movie this was. That one was a box office hit. I wouldn't yeah. say it's, whether you like it or not. It it did well. All right, it, you've you've fine. We'll watch the movie. What is that? We watched Gator Bait. I think it was on Christmas Day. That was awesome. And that one was epic. That's a drive-in. I spit on your grave. Drive-in movie. Yeah. Both the re- the original and remake. I have to say, I I preferred the remake. The remake, they made it extremely uncomfortable. Yeah, it was more happy-go-lucky, yeah. for sure. The Reanimator. Reanimator was a uh, basket was case. Awesome. Basket case, I love yeah. so much. We will be doing um, our own lists for top ten horror movies if we have any horror fans. So we won't list too many more because I'm sure they're gonna come. They're gonna appear on our list. Mm. But I will say, if you haven't seen Hereditary, you need to do that right now. So. Back to dolls. You have a doll, or your mom has a yes. doll that she wants to gift you. I will post this on our social media. She, her name is Donna May, and her one eye blinks on its own. She is absolutely terrifying. She comes from like the fifties. She's not in her original clothing. I don't. I I changed her clothing as a child, and I think we. My mom has just lost her original dress. But uh, she's like one of the only items my mom has from childhood. I believe my mom got it when she was two. So this doll is, you know, 65 years old. Oh, yeah. That's a big... That's well, a it's probably doll. older, you know, but... Um, and it's absolutely terrifying. So if anyone doesn't want to sleep at night, they can just head over to our social media on Monday, January 10th, take and a take peek. a peek at that terrifying doll, which I find creepier looking than Robert the doll. Robert the doll is pretty creepy. His worn out face definitely it, adds to his it almost sinister. Looks, it almost looks like in some some of the pictures, it almost looks like um, Jason's mask. Yeah, well, like yeah, that's, mask. yeah, that's damage done to his face. Um, oh, the dog looks creepy as hell. I know that's why I said an equally as terrifying pet. I think, I feel like, um, even when I go to antique stores, you know, and you see all the old dolls there, you know, you just feel like all those eyes are watching you. 
old toys from that time are what about the the monkey that has the symbols yeah there's all those <laughs> like old clockwork toys. yeah they're very creepy yeah. in a in a great way in mm-hmm. a great way yeah i would love to like just have like a collection of like creepy dolls and then every so often i'll go to a friend's place and just leave one somewhere in a corner somewhere when i used to live at home <laughs> Um, my mom would leave Donna Mae in just random places to freak me out, and every birthday it was Donna Mae that gave me my birthday card. My mom would set sit Donna Mae up on the breakfast bar, and my card would be sitting in like Donna Mae's lap and hands. She knows how much I hate that doll, and she loves it. She absolutely adores it, you know. Oh, that's precious. <laughs> so when we inherit this doll, yes. uh, what's going to happen to it? I I don't know. We're gonna burn it, folks. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna bu- burn it and watch. We're gonna have we're a gonna, ritual. And, and watch fucking purple fire come out and like spirits. Yeah, have some sort of ritual and. And then like it shows up the next day. <laughs> you tried to get rid of me. It's face- you know what she did. <laughs> Her face is all melted and. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but yeah, so this um, was just a short, quick story. Um keeping it a bit light and then we'll get back into the really dark and depressing things uh, again after this. The stuff we like the most. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you thank a- you, everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Give uh, your nearest do- uh, doll... A little give your, snuggle give your- from us. <laughs> yeah, pat it on the head and uh, maybe he'll visit you in the night. And be sure to email us at castagas at gmail.com to... Poke some fun at John for his commentary today. What do you mean? Poke Especially, some fun? please subject it like the drive drive-in gate or something, and let him have it. I only speak the truth on no, this. No, that was channel. you look terrified. I, I am terrified. opening up the floor for. <laughs> I need people to have my back for that. I'm just gonna edit this out. <laughs> no, don't you dare! I'm gonna put it on our social media too. All right, folks, <laughs> thanks again for listening or watching or whatever the shit. I got to look, everyone. <laughs> and uh, have a lovely, have a lovely evening. You can check us out on YouTube at Catum Concoction. That's C-A-T-A-M-C-O-N-C-O-C-T-I-O-N. <laughs> And on Instagram at cast underscore aghast. Remember, there's a silent H.